So yeah, hi, my name is Yunus. I'm a 3D AI engineer at Spaceform, and I'm joined with my colleague Ahmed, and we're going to be showing you effectively what we spent the summer doing. So next slide. Um, so let's start with what Spaceform do. We're a team of 3D artists, gaming developers, and an AI engineer. And our video is going to come through in a minute. <laughs> um, and our client is anyone that wishes to see what their architectural project looks like before it's been built. So unlike what I'm actually showing you now, we don't just do video generation. Behind this is one of what we call our virtual twins. And this is an entire interactive digital reality inside a gaming engine created from an architect's brick and mortar designs. And we can use this for collaboration, marketing, storytelling, VR, et cetera. Um, and the reason why architecture visualization is a thing is because seeing is believing. And we've actually found that it's actually experiencing which gets people really excited about our projects. So we help our clients and we give them interactive experiences that they can take ownership of and dive into with immersive experiences. Next slide. Um, so what does Spaceform AI do? A lot of man hours went into producing that virtual twin that I just showed you. And what we need to do is get this to our vision of one click virtual twins. To do this, we've used AI to tackle three core problems to take us from the bare bones scene that we see on the left to the processed and populated scene that we see on the right. Problem one is scene understanding, which is just what is the space that we're populating. Problem two is what we call asset intelligence, which is how can we understand the items that we want to put in these spaces. And problem three is scene composition, which is just what do we choose and where do we put it? And I'll spend a couple of minutes going over that before we get to our demo. Uh, so understanding our scene boils down to the following. We want our intelligence to be able to hold the context of the geometry, topology, and purpose of a scene in context whilst making decisions about which assets to choose and where to put them. Next slide. We've used AI to predict the nature and geometry of interior, in, of interior places from 2D floor pans from our architects. Next slide. Uh, 3D computer vision allows us, uh, it gives us more rich information about what's going on in the scene and where. And finally, photogrammetry allows us to produce a 3D model from any given input. And the idea here is if we can combine the three, we can turn basically anything our clients give us into an understanding of the form and function of the space. Okay. So in general, though, scene understanding is actually quite difficult. Uh, primarily, this is because acquiring the volumes and quality of data that's going to cover all of the variants that we observed is difficult. So we moved on. Now that we can understand the scene, let's say, uh, what do we put in it? The next problem we address was something that we call asset intelligence, which is about using AI uh, to understand and store information about 3D assets for downstream generative tasks. You can kind of think of this like 3D rag. Next slide. And to do this, we found answers to the following questions. Can we use computer vision to understand an asset just by looking at it? Can we store, let's say, vector embeddings so that we can call upon these understandings later? And can we align, uh, basically, text and images to retrieve the right asset from a library that could be thousands? And in answering these questions, we can develop and store, as we say, complementary understandings. And this allows our AI to do the following. Um, the mind's eye and uh, an AI generates when we give it a text can be compared to assets that we've seen it, um, and we can generate captions or tags for assets on demand and process, as we've done, thousands of assets, first just looking at them, then understanding and storing them, and then retrieving them if I say, I want a plant that looks like that, or I want a chair that looks like the one that Matt's sitting on. Uh, and in the next couple of slides, I'll show you what this looks like in practice. So. When an architect is designing a building, they'll often add a few placeholder furnishings for scale 
uh, like those shown here in white. And this is because it's difficult to gauge how large that room may be if you've never seen a two-seater sofa in it for scale. So often what designers like us get um, is, play it again, is 3D architecture models like this with hundreds of placeholders that need to be swapped out. So here, this is one of our virtual twins, as we call them, before we've applied our AI magic. And these are quite large, so we couldn't do a live demo. We'd need a couple of 4090s to do this, and we're not getting that off from the stage. Um, but after we've applied our magic, next, you'll see what happens. Next slide. So in what is a matter of clicks, we can automate the process of swapping out hundreds of assets using our asset intelligence. So the AI is going to be looking for visual cues and images like that, looking for stuff like color, texture, curves, or sharp edges. Um, and we actually su supply two images that are quite different. Um, so the AI is actually gonna struggle to not get lost in colors, for example. But with this theme, these are our mood boards, with these themes, we can go and ask the AI to get an object by, by describing it, but it's also going to do is try and pick something out that gives the feel of the themes and the mood boards that we supplied. So the AI is then gonna take a pass of the entire scene and identify the nature of these placeholders, be it chair, table, sofa, plant, whatever. And it goes to our library of potentially thousands of assets. What it does there is it says it uses its mind's eye and says, I'm going to select the best item to swap any given placeholder out with uh, that fits the scene. And we can see that start to happen there. So behind the scenes, what the AI is doing is um, actually generating text descriptions because we align text with images of what it wants. For example, a brown leather sofa it may have done. And we can see this happening in real time. We're actually searching for a coffee table. I don't know if it's too pixelated. And it's using its mind's eye and it's going and getting in our library, what do we think suits the theme and the description of a coffee table? Uh, and there you can see. And we can manually go in and swap this as a designer if we're not satisfied with what it gives us. So in a couple of seconds, we're going to see a bit of a before and after. So yeah, this is the initial state. Initially, it's a bunch of white placeholder assets. Uh, and probably about two, three minutes later, depending on your internet speed, we've swapped what could be hundreds of assets out for stuff that work a bit better. Next slide. So say we don't have a bunch of placeholder assets, but instead we have a totally blank scene. Then we need to perform asset positioning using what we call spatial intelligence as well as selection. And we call this whole process scene composition. Next slide. Okay. So here, there, soon, Hopefully, <laughs> please. <laughs> uh, do we have this video? Uh, oh, there we go. Okay, here we haven't implemented our scene understanding, so we need to select the area with which we want to populate. Here we're saying a dining room and we say model table with some stools, effectively, and we can see that comes in there. Uh, here we're going for a living room, and we're saying large sofa with square coffee table and some plants. And we see that also comes in. And what's actually happening behind the scenes, we're going to loop this video, um, is we're going in and doing something not too dissimilar from what we did before. We're saying, here's the nature of our space, living, dining room. What assets would you put in here? It's going to generate a bunch of descriptions, maybe three-seater cream fabric sofa take that to the database, imagine what that looks like and go and retrieve the best thing. We're then gonna come in uh, and do what we call spatial intelligence. And that may say uh, this sofa is one meter by three meter, but the stage is, I don't know, three by five. So we're gonna position this sofa right here, the coffee table in front of it and the plants around. And after that, we have fully fledged scenes. Next slide. Um, so yeah, this has been mainly us two uh, going crazy since I think it was April. Um, and we've got something that we can demo for you guys. It's not quite good enough to be a project uh, product. Um, so we, we're currently fundraising. We want to turn this into an internal tool 
to basically five to 10x the productivity of our company, hire, go to market, et cetera, et cetera, and solve some of the core problems that we struggled with. But yeah, that's that. Uh, Spaceform, reach out, myself, everyone, good stuff. Awesome.